Hi, this is Shadi, and today I have a couple of stories to share with you. Um, these are stories that date back to the Shoah period. So we are talking 1943, or at least that's when the book came out. So these stories are from the first uh, half of the 20th century, and it details about the brave police officers that truly uh, trained hard and also served their community, and they were willing to die for their community. So. The book that I will be sharing these stories from is called Line of Duty Death uh, Police Officer Award. So it's from the 1943 or Showa 18. Uh, this is the page that actually details the events. I'm going to share with you two stories. One where actually someone died during training and actually uh, did not survive medical treatment. And the other one where someone actually fought hard and actually died during uh, the line of online of duty so the first one that's uh, about the dying in training uh, it's talking about a visitor that went into the police academy to train judo uh, during the summer uh, training sessions and over there there was someone uh, i do believe there might have been a veteran since they did suffer from sepsis and pleurisy so breathing problems lung problems and uh, one of the knee hit that person's chest and they did not survive the medical treatment and that's how they actually died so they they basically suffocated so which makes you wonder was it uh, like a drop or they were hit uh, unintentionally or was it during Nawaza? for example here this um, Taisho era uh, jujitsu technique that you are seeing here in front of you you can see it's your classical neon belly however it is talking about um, like a choke or how to suffocate someone you put your knee on their solar plexus and as you are seeing you grab the double lapel and pull upwards which accentuates the suffocation and i'm sure anyone who's been put in a knee on belly you would know that breathing becomes very very difficult so could it be this particular technique or the dojime in general that caused this because it can easily cause uh, internal problems, whether it's the dojime from the closed guard or this one here, or uh, falling down doing sumigayashi, uh, getting a knee on your chest, your stomach, your chin even maybe. I had countless busted lips from sumigayashi, especially from beginners. It's very easy to get your chest hit and thus you can cause a lot of uh, respiratory problems. But uh, Personally, I don't know if it was something as simple as sumigayashi that caused someone to die because of pre-existing um, breathing conditions and uh, lung a condition. Personally, I don't think it's this one. I would say it's more of a newaza, uh type context because the pressure is continuous and it's subtle and it's there. So you, you can hit your knee while scrambling and actually... Uh, putting that pressure on it can kill someone so it's all japanese i personally did not fully understand everything even um i don't know the person that i asked to help me translate it's not eric shehan but someone else a japanese person so um i would say if i had to assume or guess it's probably from a newaza condition now the second one is someone that's actually a police officer who is also a judoka that died uh on duty so the story entails that it was during the night and um, he found an arsonist committing a crime. For those of you who don't know arsonist, to put it in simple terms, is when someone you know, uh, starts intentional fires, whether it's homes, uh, public buildings, parks. So obviously they endanger a lot of lives and a lot of property. So uh, he saw the arsonist, he ran after him. He eventually caught him, surrounded him. He says, and quote, he fought with all his might, but uh, he was eventually stabbed in the chest and um, his superior eventually ended up following him while the arsonist ran away. So um, he stabbed him in the chest. So I wouldn't say he was just simply put it pull it up and just stabbed him so i would say it came more of a grappling because he says he fought with all his might so i would say there was striking there was grappling involved and this is where i would say grappling can be dangerous for the grappler because 
when you're grappling, there is just so much close contact and um, a lot of touching and it's easy to have one hand that's hidden and you cannot see it when you're focusing maybe on the other arm, you're focusing, you're looking at them, uh, you're focusing on where you are applying pressure and you can miss a particular limb when this is where, for example, that limb can be a hand that's pulling out a very small knife and this is where they can stab you. So clinching uh, can is not always a good idea, especially in long periods of time. So that's why, for example, you see these kata in front of you. They're teaching them that to hit directly and take them down with not so much contact and not so much time invested in uh, the, I would say, fighting of the aggressor. So uh, clear every range in my opinion has its advantages and disadvantages so for example the clinch you can easily as you are moving or rotating your upper body they will follow you um the judo range which is a little bit uh, i would say further away you can uh, just grab the clothing you can uh, stand upright and you can see everything but uh, you're in the range of punching and kicking but nonetheless your kuzushi and how you use their clothing against them is much more efficient than a clinch. Um, of course, you have, you know, what Hannah Gracie calls the green zone, where you are just so far away that they cannot hurt you. Uh, and also, it's so far, so close where they cannot, their strikes cannot hurt you. But what Hannah did not mention is that where there is the close range, the clinch, uh, there is room for hidden weapons like pulling out a gun and putting it right on your skin and just shoot you at point blank also the stabbing is also very you can be very successful if you want to do that so i would say the judoka fought he he took a lot of time so it's if saying he fought with all his might so it wasn't a short fight so the longer the fight obviously the more you are at disadvantage i think everyone knows this when you are fighting especially a criminal an arsonist a an armed arsonist uh, in this case um you know, the, the longer the fight will go, the the worse it's going to be for you. And this is this story actually sh uh, shows this. So if you had thrown him quickly and uh, got on top of him and pinned his arms or got got him to be on his stomach downwards, the way you carry out an arrest, I would say none of that would have happened. So uh, these old kata, uh, as much as people would like to make fun of them, they are teaching you a very important principles. Um, strike go for the throw, disengage, and stay standing upright. Unless you need to carry out an arrest, which would be the techniques against weapons. Notice the techniques against the weapons. He follows them through to the ground like this one here. So if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. The book will be linked in the description below for you if you want to check it out. Um, it's not a very long book. Uh, by, the, by the way, the, the police officer that passed away in training and the other one that passed away in... Um, a line of duty they were both obviously awarded posthumously so if you have anything else to add let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons only like behind the scenes full podcasts and uh videos special exclusive for the patrons only if you have anything else to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening